and welcome back and happy holidays and happy new year and thank you so much for an amazing year this channel has managed to grow from about 10,000 subscribers to over 56 thank you fine people and a special big thank you to patreons that really helps as is traditional at this time of the year i thought we'd have a look back at some highlights the thing about YouTube is everybody enjoys a new film, but it does mean that lots of the older, some are good films, <laughs> tend to get lost in the mists of time. YouTube has a thing called playlists. This channel has them. It has military, science, aviation, weird stuff. So go and have a look at some of the things that you might enjoy. But today, I thought I'd point you to some of my favourite films. Here's a classic, How to Communicate with a Submarine. Due to the very low frequency, a VLF broadcast antenna station needs to be quite large. In fact, broadcasting sites usually cover a few square miles. This, of course, prevents such transmitting antennas being installed on a submarine. So a ground-to-submarine VLF broadcast is always a one-way broadcast. And because of the VLF's narrow bandwidth, these radio signals cannot carry voice and can only transmit text messages. VLF data transmission rates are about a sentence every two seconds a total of about 450 words per minute. And this film is a passionate interest of mine, going years back to when I worked for BBC Horizon. We met this scientist who told us about the human bottleneck. The cooling effect was caused by ash ejected into the upper atmosphere. This reflected sunlight and caused a sudden and surprising cooling effect. But this film is not really about volcanoes. It's about us, the human race. Humans have been on this planet for six million years. We first evolved into our upright walking shape we have today in the east of Africa. Slowly humans evolved characteristics that helped us survive. Bigger brains stronger hands that can manipulate tools, and the ability to be creative. Over these millions of years, evolution must have made many successful variations of the human form. But today we are all incredibly similar in shape, height and abilities. Small differences exist due to adaptation to the environment, but we are not the diverse human race that you would expect to see. The question is, why? I noticed this terrible place is now back in the news. The US exploded many above-ground nuclear bombs in the 50s and 60s in the Marshall Islands and built this dome of death. Doing a bit of research, I discovered this horrendous story. The concrete dome, which is 18 inches thick, is in the news right now because it's cracking. And also the atoll is under threat due to climate change and sea level rise. And in fact, in storm conditions, sea water will go right over this dome. And also the dome was never lined. It was built in a circular depression left by an earlier test on porous ground. And under the dome, it's full of seawater and the material inside leaches out into the ocean at every tide.
many of you will have watched a series on the wonderful Dr. Eric Lathwaite. Eric is a hero of mine, a mechanical engineer who basically invented the linear motor, but ended his career rather badly. This is just a, a rough model of an ordinary rotary motor that goes round and round, but it's got a zipper on it, so you can split it and unroll it. Right. Now, instead of the magnetic field going round and round, it now travels in a straight line, if you flatten that out. Mm -hmm. and so we, here we've got a real one. This was only made of rubber, of course. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've not experienced this before, it's very unusual. We'll switch it on. This is an aluminium plate. I'd like you to hold it over the motor and tell us what you feel. Uh, well, it, it wants to go to the left or to the right. It's also the... got a lifting force on it, yes. isn't it? So if I just turn the juice up a little bit and I let it go, you'll see just how it goes. And with all those mince pies inside us, maybe we need a bit more logical thinking. Good morning. A good friend of mine who's a doctor of psychology told me about this. And it's about logical thinking. In World War II, the US Air Force were losing a phenomenal amount of aircraft. And they wanted to look at the damage and work out how to make the aircraft safer and stronger. I mean, the sad statistic is if you are flying a bomber for the US Air Force in World War II, your average survival rate was 10 missions. Now, you remember the amazing film Memphis Bell? Now, the thing about Memphis Bell was the plane survived over 30 missions, and that was a carrot that was dangled for the US airmen to, you know, if you survive 30 missions, you got to go home. I mean, no one ever did. I mean, it's very sad. Anyway, back to the plane. Now, follow this carefully because it's fascinating. So, bombers were damaged when they returned here, here, all in the midsection. The tails were blown off and the other wingtip. So these were the three, four areas of common damage. And so engineers started to look at um, how they could strengthen the wingtips, the center section, and the tail of planes, because this was the damage that they saw from planes when they returned. <laughs> I think you're going to see what I'm going to say. A brilliant engineer and statistician said, you have got this all wrong. What we're looking at here are the damage of planes that returned, the survivors. So in fact, strengthening the wingtips, the center section and the tail is exactly 100% the wrong thing to do. The weak areas of this aircraft are in fact the engines, the nose and the cockpit. The bits that you never saw come back to airbase damaged because the plane was destroyed. This reversal is a very good way of looking at the world following the disaster that's called Brexit and the possible breaking up of the United Kingdom when Scotland becomes its own empire, maybe they'll expand to the small island of Rockall. Welcome back. There is one place in the British Isles that has seen fewer people than the moon. Rockall, westerly, veering northwesterly, 7 to severe gale 9, decreasing 5. Showers, good. But where exactly is Rockall and why is it important?
The possession of Rockall, 386 kilometers or 240 miles west of the Scottish mainland, was for many decades deemed imperative in order to secure claims to the vast tracts of surrounding fisheries. Due to the chaos of Brexit, the UK currently does not have a defence minister and as Rockall was given to Scotland to look after in 1972, the British government passed the buck to Fiona Hislop. Scotland's Cabinet Secretary for Culture, Tourism and External Affairs to become our War Minister. She is a patron of the arts and enjoys a nice opera. It was rumoured she was going to send a patrol boat. But as Scotland does not have its own navy and definitely does not have a patrol boat with guns, to fire warning shots across the bows of errant Irish fishing boats. It was speculated that a brawny Scotsman would need to sail out to the rock and shout, get your arses away from our rock. In the slightly altered words of Flanders and Swan, the fleet set sail for Rockall. We sped across the planet to find this lump of granite. When we got there, all we found was one startled gannet. It seems there's rock all there. This double entendre was slightly risky for a 1950s song. I love this story. Who knew that an app for runners would expose some of the most secret bases on the planet? Strava, which is based in San Francisco, claims tens of millions of users in almost every country. Strava has published a global heat map showing the movements of people who have made their posts public. But an Australian security analyst has started to take note of that data and has argued that Strava's maps represent a possible security breach. The Strava map outlines known and secret military bases around the world. And probably the most problematic part is it shows lines where personnel go for a run. The Pentagon did not directly address whether the Strava heat map has revealed any sensitive location data. But Major Harris, a Pentagon spokeswoman, said the Defense Department recommends that all personnel limit their public social media profiles and that it was reviewing the situation. As a seasonal delight, let's look at the mystery and history of time zones. The time is now 10.46, 14 minutes before countdown, 14 minutes. The day the Earth caught fire will burn itself into your memory. Is it fiction or is it fact? What's the mutation of the Earth? Mutation? Well, it's a slight oscillation on the Earth's axis, caused by the pull of the sun and the moon it's on changed. the equator. You see, there's a slight bulge on the... There's also an item here about axis rotation. There's been 11 degree variation, whatever that may mean. They've shifted the tilt of the Earth. The stupid, crazy, irresponsible bunglers. Sometimes I think I'm losing the plot. And maybe we all are because our brains are evolving. I've always been rather optimistic about human evolution. Us homo sapiens have only been around 200,000 years, but the Earth is 4.5 billion years old. The ancients were hunter-gatherers. They needed fast responses 
impulsive behavior, and creative minds. Since we stopped chasing our dinner and started growing lunch, we sat around and watched the crops mature, making intellectual decisions about the world, about weather, and even putting men on the moon, and gave up chasing mammoths. <coughs> Today, the classic ADHD or hyperactive child is probably a kid that has inherited more of our early human special abilities. They are often impulsive, can't concentrate, spend their day making art and taking risks. Exactly not what a good farmer needs to be. And to end, here's a really strange one. This guy who lived in Wisconsin, in the Midwest of the US, basically invented the laser weapon. And it was used by Oliver North and the CIA, and later became the basis of the film Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Enjoy. Occasionally you'll come across a story that is so good, but would never be on television. This is that story. It's a story of the CIA, Ronald Reagan, the challenge and disaster, Ayatollah Khomeini, the Contras, Sandinistas, lasers, and even UFOs. It's true, and it is one of the best spy stories I have ever heard. Last part of the story becomes strange and um, leaves the world of reality and uh, but is real. He built a device, a laser device, a laser beacon to attract UFOs and a device to communicate with aliens using lasers, light, and wait for it, music. Hang on, so aliens land in the middle of Wyoming near Devil's Tower, the mothership um, makes some noises, and we have a large government facility that plays music. I think I've seen that somewhere. Isn't that called Close Encounters of the Third Kind? It's real. Well, as always, thanks for watching. Keep it real. And you know, the truth is out there. Mm -hmm.